guys, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on the inside of um, Voyage Beneath the Sea. And I usually just do a flat panel, but I've decided to put pockets on either side, so it's a little bit different. And uh, let me tell you what the pocket measurements are. They are... I'm surprised I didn't write this down, but I didn't. Ten and a quarter... by six. Ten and a quarter by six, you're gonna score half inch on three sides, and that pocket is gonna go actually to the outside edge, and I also see I didn't put tape on here. I'm just so unprepared, <laughs> sorry guys. Oh my God, what is the dealio, Daph? I don't know. I don't know what happens. Sometimes you're just, it's all smooth sailing, and other time you're like, uh, I think my brain, my thought process gets ahead of what I've actually done on the project. So I think I'm, I'm oh, I'm past that, I already did it. <laughs> Tape chair tool, which if you don't have one, I don't know how you can live without it, because I can't. It is, it has saved me so much time. I actually figured out, I had originally made one, which you can do yourself or you can buy one from us, um, using a quilting tool, a two inch by two inch square in the quilting uh, section of the craft store and then I put a knob on top of it and that's how I came up with this. Um, but what I found out pretty quickly was all the lines were very confusing and difficult to look at and also, um, it turns out that those little quilting squares, those two inch by two inch acrylic squares, are quite expensive. <laughs> so just the acrylic square was more than the what we sell our acrylic square and the handle for. So I, I think it's a good deal, and I, I just it was just too busy for me to look at it. It had all these quarter inch increments all the way across it, and it's in black ink, and it was just hard to look at. But I liked the idea, and that's why I went ahead and designed one of my own. And we call it the tape tear tool. So it comes in clear acrylic, and I think we still have a few more of these. They're a limited edition. And I have two. I keep my clear one in the dining room, and I keep this one in here. And if I had it to do over again, they'd both be uh, a bright color because they're easier to locate. The handle helps you locate it, but also the color. Okay, blah, blah, blah. That's my two-second or 30-second uh commercial on tape tear tool. Um, I try not to bore you guys with too much of that nonsense because I know you're here for the albums. Okay, so this is going to go flush and it's actually measured to be the same width as, let me, let me make sure I'm going, yeah, um, as the uh, cover itself. So it should be nine and a quarter inches wide and it looks like uh, it's almost like I planned it. It works just perfect. Okay, so the other thing you might want to notice is I put a panel in here. I don't always do that, but because we're going to use this as an insert, I didn't want a lip on the bottom edge where um, where I had wrapped it around, and I talked about that while I was doing some of the work on the inside of the album. So I would recommend that you put something on here to make everything sort of the same level so as you put something in the pocket, there's nothing for it to get hung up on. Okay, so that's one side. Let's do the other side. I don't have tape on anything. I'm just so unprepared. <clears throat> one of the things I like about having a pocket on the front and the back like this is you can, you can stash lots of memorabilia. It doesn't have to be photos. But the other thing you can do, I don't like to put down too many embellishments until I know where my photos are going and what my photos are. So I don't want the embellishment to dictate um, what I decide to put on the page from a photo perspective. So the front pockets and the back pockets are a great place to stash all your ephemera and embellishments until you know where your photos are gonna go. And then they're with the album. And also if you're gifting it, it's a great way to stash all those um, wonderful pieces for whoever you're gifting it to. Let them know that they've got those extra pieces to embellish the album with. 
Okay, again, we're going to go on the outside edge of the book with these pockets. <clears throat> I gotta shift this around so I can better see the edges. There we go. So now we've got these big, beautiful, deep pockets. Let's decorate them. Okay, so we're using this green in um, I think both page one and page eight. So rather than having it on the outside edge, I'm gonna put it on the inside edge and we're gonna tuck it in just like so. Oh my gosh, look at that. It looks like I actually inked it. So you don't have to watch me do that on both sides. Let's make sure it's right side up because these are directional. Now this is my leading edge. This is my leading edge. I'm not gonna put glue on it. I'm gonna put glue below that line so that I can push it under the pocket, pull it back out and position it without worrying about gluing my pocket shut. So what I mean is if there's glue all the way on this edge and I push it in too far and then try to pull it back, I'm gonna leave a trail of glue. So that's why I try to leave my leading edge um, bare and then push it in at an angle like I'm doing. And this is a little bit of a challenge because you're working against chipboard, which is not flexible. <laughs> so it's a little harder to work with than trying to put it into a pocket on a page. There we go. But nothing you can't handle. And then it's slightly tucked into the pocket, which I think makes for a very clean edge. Some people like to put the pocket on top. I just can't do it. I, can't, I can always see the flange. <laughs> so it's just not me. Again, this is my leading edge, so we're gonna leave this edge bare. And give yourself some time. Be patient. It is a little harder to tuck it into a pocket that is that's got um, chipboard behind it because there's just no flexibility at all. Just like downtown. Okay, moving right along. Okay, and then I've trimmed out these border pieces and then this is gonna cover the pockets. And this is a big book, so I feel like I'm constantly shuffling things because it takes up my whole space. So I trimmed these out to fit uh, just right and I'm trying to decide how I want to use these border strips, if they're going to go right on the edge, or if I want to do like a quarter inch strip, and then this, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to wind up doing a little bit of trimming, but I think it's going to look so much better. So I'm going to trim a quarter, off, quarter inch off. And of course it's not perfect, so hang tight. Um, that's an eight. There we go. All right. So here's my quarter inch. So I'm going to do a quarter inch strip. Then I'm going to do the border strip. And then we're going to do this. And I think that looks fantastic. So because I just trimmed it off that piece, I know one edge is 
cut, so it needs ink. So let's do that. And then we're going to repeat the process on the other side. And if you're uncomfortable with a quarter inch, half inch, I think will look just as good. Okay. Now the challenge with quarter inch strips is they can bow. So look at your black line and try to keep it, you know, as straight as possible. You might have to straighten it out like in the middle it wanted to bow out. Um, so it, that's one of the reasons why a quarter inch is so hard to work with. Half inch doesn't want to do that. An inch definitely won't bow on you. In. Now the last piece we have to trim based on that quarter inch strip we took off plus knowing that we want a little gap in between each one of the papers. gosh I can't believe it I put it in my trimmer and it was actually straight which when you put two strips in that's pretty remarkable anyway so uh, what do you guys think I like it I think it looks very nice and then the, this is our pocket so now I need to re-ink both edges get this in and then we're going to repeat that process on the other side so I don't know exactly how wide this is. It's just a cut apart from one of the pages. And I'm glad I checked this because it is directional and I almost put her heads in upside down. Speaking of upside down, let's make, yeah, make sure I had everything else in right side up. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll get these in and then um, I'll take a break and sort all my pages and we'll go ahead and install the pages. And that will be it for this video. Yes, I think that looks lovely. I think that looks a lot better than the alternative, which would have been this. Yeah. I think that looks a lot better. It's more interesting. Okay, now the patterns are exactly the same, but I want them to mirror, so I'm gonna flip this one around. And we're gonna cut it a quarter inch off this one. Okay. Here's my quarter inch piece and ink the side I just trimmed. <clears throat> and I took it off the wrong side, darn it. Oh well. So it's going to go here. And like I said, the quarter inch wants to kind of bow, so pay attention to your edges.
Then we're going to install this, which I've already inked. It's ready to go. And again, we're doing a mirror. So I flipped it over. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do is we are going to trim this to fit. I think I might have to trim this a couple times. It looks like it's not quite straight. So I'm going to trim a little and I might have to go one more time. Yeah, it's slightly crooked. <clears throat> so you can see how this is drifting down. So that's the problem I'm trying to solve. And I can do that by trimming this way. So if I trim from that edge to the center, I should be able to straighten it out. Now keep in mind, I'm not trying to do a right angle anymore. I'm trying to make it uh, straight to what's already on the page. And it's still drifting. I think I still need to come over just a little bit more. This should do it. Now when we look at it, it should be, see now how it looks straight on the top and bottom? That's because I cut this at a diagonal. So once you get that straightened out, then you can just put two tick marks over here and then cut this edge straight and it should work out just fine. But that's why I pencil mark these. The more you do of color blocking, the more you realize that you've got to do multiple trims to get it just the way you want it. That's pretty darn good. But it's still a little tight, so I'm going to take a little more off. Okay, that should do it. I'm going to ink it and we're going to lay it down. And again, the key is to change this angle. Don't keep trimming off the top because that's not going to solve your problem. It's just going to make it worse. Okay. And I deliberately leave this stuff in because, I, you know, I spend a lot of time trying to figure these things out on my own. Um, and I, what I've noticed honestly, is most people that do tutorials don't talk about these kinds of things. And if you are like me and your eyes are drawn to the edge, which I think most people are, um, those lines that aren't straight drive me crazy. I'll spend more time looking at a crooked installation than the paper. Now, see, and, it, and we know it was crooked to start with, and that looks pretty darn good, doesn't it, girls, ladies? Okay, there you go. So again, the key is never to keep trimming off the, the top and the bottom. It's to start coming in at an angle here until you've kind of clocked it back around. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't always work out this well, but this looks like it's pretty good. And I'm really happy with the way the pockets look. So we're going to stick some interesting things in here for now. And we'll work on putting some other stuff in there later. In a few minutes, I'm going to get the tape on here. You guys don't need to watch me do that. 
and then we're gonna install the pages. I need to make sure they're in the right order. I have been known to put them in out of order as well as upside down. So I'm gonna go make sure I've got all that ironed out before I start installing my pages. So I'll be back shortly and I promise I'll do a little housekeeping in the meantime. Bye-bye.